Hi, on this video, we are going to be going over the basics of unit testing. On the right, I have a sample project open called Flickr, where you can put a search term and use the Flickr API to display images based on what you searched. We are going to you searched. We are going to close the emulator now and just we'll go over the project. The project just uses an activity that houses a fragment and one view model. The view model just has a basic function of taking data to the data source, pulls data from the Flickr API, and sends it back to the fragment uh, via uh, flows. And when you're working on your project, especially when you know you'll be writing unit tests, you need to make sure you plan your dependency management. Now, if you look here at the constructor for the view model, you can see I'm passing in my data source and also I'm passing in a coroutine dispatcher. I'm doing this because in the unit test, we'll be swapping these dependencies out for the test version of the dependencies. And that makes it easier for us to mock data and then check against the value and determine if our code works the way we want it to work so the concept of unit testing i'm going to show the data source here is our data source it's an interface it just has one method called get feeds and if you look closely at the view model, you can see I'm passing in a type of the data source and not that for the implementation. Why I'm doing this is so when I'm swapping in the um, test implementation, I don't need to change this because both the test implementation of the data source and the actual data source would both be implementing this interface so they can both be assigned to this but if i was to use the implementation version here like this then i wouldn't be able to substitute this for the test version when i'm writing my unit test i mean unless maybe this was an open class and it brings more complexity so it's better to just use the interface and if you notice it show the red line when I put this and that's because the implementation of this is actually is actually an internal class. It has a visibility modifier of internal so we can hide the implementation. Now before we finish the view model, just see I use the factory pattern here to pick the implementation of the data source. That lets us not need to put in to create the um, dependency here. All right, and now let's just look through the view model uh, quickly before we take a look at the unit test code. It's very important to always understand the code you'll be unit testing so you know exactly what you need to pass in and what to expect. Also, as a side note, this project is available on GitHub. You can check the description below and the link to the GitHub project would be is available. Uh, you are free to clone it and go over the code for learning purposes as well. And if any improvements you'd like to make, feel free to create a PR. Now this is the get UI feed method. What it does is it takes in a string of search term and it takes in a Boolean value to force refresh. And if it's not if it's not a refresh, we don't send um, loading states. Here we have a when statement that defines our various states which is a success and a failure and a, an, an error. And now in our unit test, we are going to test if this method is able to properly handle these states. And depending on what 
is returned from the data source. So our unit test is basically testing if our view model is working correctly. Here we pass in the dispatcher that was defined in the um, constructor. And here we pass in a coroutine exception handler. If an error is thrown during the execution of this code, it should be caught here within the coroutine exception handler. And, and then we send in a custom error. Okay, so let's take a look at our unit test. Now in the unit test class, I'm going to just close this. We have a couple of methods here. Now it's very important for unit test to be very descriptive. So just looking at the unit test, you know exactly what is supposed to be tested. Now we have this first test, which tests to see if a success is returned when the data source emits the appropriate um, UI state. And the next one tests to see if the appropriate error is returned. And the last one tests for no internet exception when a request is made and the device probably is not connected to Wi-Fi. So here we define our view model and we delegate it as not null because we don't want to create this as a nullable type since the main setup is going to be happening down here. Um, we call the setup method in each of the test methods. Why we're doing this is because we want to pass in a custom data source depending on what the um, test method is supposed to be here. We are testing for success and we pass in a test success data source. And here we are testing for a failure and we pass in a failure data source. So the view model is created depending on, it is created with a data source that depends on what the test method is. I hope that doesn't sound too complicated. So because of that, that's why, and that's why we are delegating our view model here as not null. And we do the actual create view model object in the setup method. Now you can see where we also pass in an unconfined test dispatcher. This is what's going to be passed into the view model for the unit test. So I, the other methods in which you can actually swap out the, the, the dispatcher, but uh, maybe in another video we can cover that. So the test is pretty straightforward. We set up the view model and we just called the view model method called get feed. And I'm, I'm going to open the view model in this side screen so we can look at them side by side. Now we put in the tag get feed. Uh, we can ignore the is refresh, it's not important for this test. And then after calling the get feed, According to the view model, when the when you pass in the search term and you call the method, the next thing, according to the view model, when you pass in the search term, a uh, coroutine is launched. And here the data source is contacted. The tag is passed into the data source. And as you can see, the get feed method is a suspend function. When this function is done executing, the, um, the flow of the project continues. And if it's a success, the UI data is passed into the Flickr flow. And here, that is what we want. And that's what we are testing for in this success method. So after we call get feed, we Pick the value. Now this value method is a state flow method. I'm going to open it real quick. Um, it picks the current value from the state flow. So by the time the project is done executing at this point, the current value should be a success type. And here we assert that 
the um, data has a title called test now. I'm able to use this because I already defined this within my test data source. My success data source, I gave it a title called test. Um, you can call it in your test. You should just have something you're testing against. So I just want to be sure that this is returned. And for that, I use the title test. And within the unit test here, I check that the first item in the list is this. Now, um, hard coding of arrays is not so, it's not advisable, but for the purpose of this example, let's, let's just ignore that. Um, okay. Now I'm going to show you the flow of the actual data source. Now, if this data source, if we're using the real data source, what happens is we contact the uh, API. We pass the data and we return it. But because we are using a test data source, we skip all this and just directly return a response. So no delays. Now, exactly the same thing happens for the error. We have a called a failure data source. We send a failure type with an exception. Now, these are custom types. Um, these are not custom supported types. These are custom types that you can use. You can define any type you want or even use the result type. And here I send in an exception with a status code. And in the unit test, I try to assert that on error, I'm able to get an error of general class. Again, this is a um, custom class in which I defined over here. I just extends exceptions. And for the final test, we have the no internet exception. Now, the difference with this test is we actually throw an exception and it's not only about testing if, um, see if the exception is an IUX. It's also to check that our view model is able to properly handle thrown exceptions. And if you remember, I showed this coroutine exception handler. I want to confirm that our coroutine exception handler is working as it should. And when an exception is thrown, it's able to gracefully handle that error and we assert that the value is probably passed into our state flow and we check for that down here and that's basically it for the unit testing uh, the important thing to remember is when you're writing code i know we unit tested you need to focus on dependency management Make sure your your methods are as definitive as possible because you need to be able to know exactly what you'll be testing with those methods. So the more focused they are, the better. Also, one thing to note is we are not using any form of run blocking or run test within the unit test. And that's because we did not call any suspend functions directly within this unit test. In the view model, if you notice, we launch a coroutine when the get UI feed method is called, and this is not a suspend function. But the data source actually has a suspend function, which is this. But that's executed within this coroutine uh, scope, so we don't actually need to use any ROM blocking or ROM testing, but that won't always be the case. And for my next video, I'm going to share how you land a situation where your method is a suspend function and you need to test that suspend function. So just look out for the next video where we talk about testing suspend, cutting suspend functions. And thank you.
member um, check the description for a link to the project bye for now